Unify US 8150 watt PoE switch. So this is your basic Unify switch with all the cool Unify features, ties into the Unify dashboard. And I realized I hadn't reviewed one of these or taken one apart. So, you know, figured time to take a look at them. Uh, this is actually destined for our office because we have a handful of PoE things at the very front of our office that we've added. Um, and this is a convenient switch to do so. It's compact, it's small, it will fit in the rack, but unfortunately it's not rack mountable. Now it does come with some ears um, that are already stuck to where it's going to go, so I actually don't have them. I'm grabbing this before they get finished mounting it, uh, but you'll see in the box it comes the ears. It's not rack width, so it's so you can mount it flush on the wall, but it's a great little 150 watt PoE. And I figured uh, first thing we're gonna do is pop it apart. So we're gonna go ahead and take it apart here because I wanna look inside before we talk about some of the other features. And carefully, carefully, maybe, maybe. All right, there we go, we got it open. There's only two screws in it, by the way. I took those out before we started. There's only two little screws in the back and now let's take a look inside. So the only two screws are go th through this and into this, so two at the back and it slides, but we also have the light in the front, which you do have to disconnect. So uh, that gets that part of it off there, no big deal. And you see that there's no fan in it. So we have a 150 watt power supply, the standard AC adapter right here, AC plug, a Molex style connector, the one large passive heatsink, which just does seem to operate. Uh, we left it on for a while, testing a handful of things on it. It seems to stay right around the 120 degree mark. I forget what that is in Celsius. That's a, we've seen it maybe go a little bit higher, but that was at the heatsink level we're actually testing it with this right here, which is off now, so it's not gonna give a good accurate reading. But it does not seem to be too hot nor need a fan. It did not come with one, like I said here. Uh, so that's not been a problem. Build design standard, we got the nice little ubiquity right here. Uh, we did not find, and if you reference back to years ago in one of the first Unify videos, we did find a fingerprint in one of these. This is um, no fingerprints inside of here. Everything's nice, clean, and exactly as you see it. And being passively cooled is not bad. It does have the venting on the side right here to kind of passively let airflow through, but I don't recommend stacking things on top of it. It is a all metal design here, so you can all metal, metal, and that will help kind of keep the heat somewhat dissipated because uh, metal will dissipate heat, but if you start stacking things on top or blocking airflow on these side vents of just the ambient airflow that may happen, it may get even hotter. So pretty basic from the inside, like I said, everything looks solid. It looks uh, somewhat easy if you were to have to replace the power supply because it's just, it's not soldered to the board. You could just pull the one connector off and uh, one connector off here and the power supply is a separate board. But in the past, because people have asked me about this, have we ever had Unify switches go bad? Yes, we have. Their RMA process is pretty pain free. Not really a problem. All right, let's go ahead and slide this back on. Oh, a little comment. It does have these little notches right here. So when you're putting it back together, they clip into these when they slide. So make sure it all lines up, which is not difficult to do. It's just noteworthy if you're wondering why it doesn't line up. If you, for some reason, are like me and take your switch apart because you want to look inside of it. Or maybe you don't need to look inside of it because I took it apart for you. So you kind of got to get it on there and then push, squeeze, and now it's lined up. Now, if we look at the front here, we have an SFP uh, ports. SFP, not SFP plus. These are standard one gig ports. Then we have eight PoE ports. Now, in case you're wondering, they do make a lower wattage version of this. They make a USG eight port with no SFP and only four of them are PoE. Uh, that's a little bit less money than this one. This one right now lists for like 199. You might be able to find it cheaper, uh, but it's not, it's a little bit more, but you're getting 150 watts and this is full 802.3 AFAT PoE Plus. The other one I don't believe has the full support on there. Uh, you can compare on their site and they have the specs listed. But having the SFP, obviously these ones are not uh, PoE, but these are PoE. So SFP, so you don't have to waste any PoE ports interconnecting it between the switch or whatever your uplink is. So the switch is set up, adopted, and I just threw a couple devices on there. This is what we were testing it with before we uh, finished mounting it and putting it into our network here. Uh, but the switch works perfectly fine with PoE. I'm running a Unify HD here, and I grabbed a real link PoE camera and plugged it in as well. And let's look at the software real quick. So it's part of any other Unify, familiar with the Unify software. 
it shows up in the dashboard. We adopt it, update it to the latest firmware, and it's working perfectly fine. It also does a little mouse over so you can see how many watts each thing is using in here. And it's got, we'll go over here to uh, configure the ports. There we go. Move this up. You can select, uh, select them individually. It will show you exactly how many watts each port's using. So the camera's currently using 2.78 and the HD, which is plugged into port three, is using 6.57. And if we go to edit the ports, you can see that we have, let's go down here, uh, Turning off the PoE, 24 volt passive is supported and PoE plus. Plus your other features such as switching, mirroring, aggregate, um, unicast, multicast, broadcast, uh, LLDP med, this is for your pass through for your phones. The spanning tree protocol is supported and you can do egress rate limiting. So if you wanted to set a specific egress rate limit for it, that is possible as well to do some restrictions. Those are all the features that are supported on this switch. It does not have some of the more advanced options that you may find in other ones, but for a small office, this is probably perfectly adequate for a lot of the use cases that you would want to use, such as uh, plugging in a couple PoE phones and a Wi-Fi and maybe a couple cameras in a little four person office. That's where we've used a few of these before. Now the switch does support opening a terminal. I like this feature a lot. This is part of a Unify feature, but you also have to have a new enough modern piece of Unify equipment support. This is supported on quite a few different models and it's being able to open a terminal right to the device. And you can SSH into it, of course, but I like being able to do it all through the UI right here. And this allows us to start looking at what's plugged in and start pinging things. Uh, Cause sometimes just the basics is where you have to start to figure out why something's uh, gone wrong. And let's look at uptime, for example. And uh, we can see how long it's been up for 16 minutes after I restarted it. Uh, that's some of the editing and me setting up for this video. <laughs> so it didn't, didn't, in been, has not been up too long. Uh, the system also has the ability to tell you what temperature it's operating at. And after 16 minutes, we're at 49C. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I think it's like about 120. So it's a roughly 120, which is what we see it kind of peak out at. Uh, after it's been on for a while. So it doesn't get much hotter than this, at least you are testing it has not. I imagine if I leave this on top long enough, maybe it'll get a little bit warmer, but like I said, the venting is uh, on the sides here. Uh, but overall, it's another solid little switch from Unify. I like the fact, like I said, being passive, there's no fan story about, there's no noise if it's in a small office or happens to be sitting at your desk. And I've mentioned this before, I really like, for example, these Unify Nano HDs. If you were a home user and looking to get a basic but good switch and uh, jump into the Unify ecosystem, you can combine, for example, the Unify Gen 2 Plus controller, the Unify Nano HD, and maybe a couple cameras, and you can build out a pretty small home office or small uh, home user setup uh, for not too much. I mean, I know $200 is not free, but it's also not crazy expensive for a managed POE switch uh, with the features and power you get with the Unify system. So I think it's a good buy. Uh, well, that's why we bought it, and that's why we deploy them for some of these small offices, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.